Hi, I'm Supervisor Don Kanabi, and I'm pleased to welcome you back to another episode of Dialed In. Are you a parent with the young kids who need to burn off some energy? Or maybe you're a senior looking to join a club or an exercise class. Or maybe you're the adventurous type looking to get out into the wilderness for an adventure. Do you know you can do all those activities right here in Los Angeles County in your own community? Los Angeles County is home to more than 63,000 acres of parks, trails, lakes, natural areas, gardens, and the largest municipal golf course system in the country. With more than 177 county parks and facilities, you can pick a letter from A to Z and find something to do, whether it's horseback riding, crafting, aquatics, skeet shooting, or golfing. There's something for everyone here in our Los Angeles County Parks and Recreations Department. This month, I'm pleased to welcome two folks in the department, as well as someone whose golf career got started right here in the links of Los Angeles County. I hope you'll enjoy the show. Welcome back to Dialed In. My first two guests today are the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation, Mr. Russ Guinea, and his Chief Deputy Director, John Wicker. Russ has served as our Director since 2005 and is responsible for the operation, maintenance, and management of our Los Angeles County Park System, including a budget of $184 million. John started his career with the department as a lake lifeguard in 1978, is now responsible for overseeing the operations of our county parks. Thank you for joining me today, Russ and John. Thank you Thank for you. having us. Before we get into it, uh, Russ, I, I know it's sort of imminent, uh, but you have been our director since 2005 and uh, you're going to be retiring. Is that yeah, correct? That's correct, Supervisor. I've, I'll have 40 years in the park and recreation field. Well, we thank you for your 10 years with us, and I know 30 years with the state, and you used to get to wear that hat. I remember That's that right. hat when you came to work for Los Angeles County, you know, Smokey the Bear. I said, no, it's Russ Guinea. <laughs> uh, we want to welcome you both back. So let's sort of start at the 30,000-foot the 30, level, Russ, and I'll start with you. What does the Department of Parks and Recreation encompass? I'm, I'm always amazed and thrilled about what we do, but so many people just think it's like their local county parks and rec. There's a little park here and a little park there. Give us an idea of the overall sense of, of what we do as a county in our Parks and Recreation sure. Department. Well, as, as you're aware, the 88 cities all have their own Park and Rec departments, but we have 135 unincorporated communities in the county, and we're the local park agency for those counties, the parks that you just talked about, the small community parks. But we also have a system of regional parks. So we provide for all the county the three lakes where you can go boating, uh, they have swim beaches. We provide a system of over 250 miles of trails and those kind of facilities that outreach to everybody in the county, but we also get a lot of visitors that come to these facilities from outside Los Angeles County. How many visitors do we get a year, you think? We have about 23 million visits to our 177 parks. Parks and all of our facilities. Correct. And what's the difference between a regional park that you mentioned and a community regional park? Well, a community regional park serves a, a smaller area. Um, people in 10, 15 mile radius might come to that park. Um, Cerritos Regional Community Regional Park is an example. And then our regional parks serve the entire county. So people will come from across the county to Castaic Lake because they want to go boating. Mm -hmm. People even come from outside the county. Castaic Lake's in North County, right? For yes. those that may not be familiar with our... So if you can sort of identify the territories where it's close to, because uh, a lot of folks don't realize that we go that far north. I mean, Absolutely. They, they think that's in another world. Of course, when you're commuting out that way, it is. <laughs> sure. So, John, you, we have a lot of kids, as, as Russ mentioned, at the parks, and particularly during the summertime. What kinds of programs do we offer them, the kids, each and every day? Is it we, in addition to all the other specific programs, and maybe lunch and snacks? Do we do all that? We do. We've got a full gamut or full range of activities for the youth. We have a, a great summer lunch program that we provide uh, meals, nutritious meals to children that are 18 years and younger. We offer it Monday through Friday at over 50 sites throughout the county. And then there's a lot of great programs, day camps and activities that the children can join in as well. So really a, a youth could start out at our park in the early morning, they could take swimming lessons and they could eat lunch and then they could uh, do some recreational swim or playing in the park in the afternoon as well. So maybe for our folks out there, between the two of you, you can sort of identify various areas of the county and what kinds of facilities are out there, just to give us a, a little uh, Google representation of where these facilities are. I mean, they might know in their own backyard, but uh, what I've found and what you continue to say and have done such a good job overseeing is that 
you don't just have to stay in your own backyard here in Los Angeles County. There's so many opportunities out there. So maybe you could give us some of those the facilities and location or, you know, you know, not the address or anything, but sure. an mm -hmm. area. Well, I could, I could talk first a little bit about our um, natural areas and our nature centers. We have eight nature centers throughout the county, all the way from the Palos Verdes Peninsula to the Devil's Punch Bowl on the far side of the San Gabriel Mountains. So a lot of people don't realize how much natural area in Los Angeles County has been preserved and how they can learn about nature. And at our nature centers, you can learn everything about the San Gabriel Mountains, the San Gabriel River, the coastal ecosystems, just a wide variety of things. And then we have natural areas that preserve uh, wildflowers and are set aside as wildlife sanctuaries. So that's one example of the broad range of facilities we have, and John probably has another example. Sure, we have a, we also have an extensive local park system. As Russ mentioned, there's 135 different unincorporated communities throughout the county, and we're the local park provider in those. So we would provide uh, similar services that the cities would do. So if you live in an unincorporated area, there would be a local park that would be close to your house. This would be countywide. Uh, you know, we uh, anywhere from, uh, as Russ mentioned, the community regionals to the, the local parks. Uh, well, as an example, of, uh, I'm I live in Cerritos, okay. so we have Cerritos Regional Park. Yep, we operate uh, there. And in my district, I have what La Mirada and some others. Maybe you can give some, you know, the, the, the Hart. What is it? William that? S. Hart Park William. in Santa Clarita. Right. That's right. And what are some of the other regional parks or community regional parks and their location? Okay, we have uh, La Mirada is, is a regional park as right. you mentioned and, and Cerritos in your district. Mm -hmm. We also, we have a Shabaram Regional Park which is a little bit larger than, than those other community regional parks. That's located in the city of Roland Heights. We've got, um, let's see, we have El Carrizo Community Regional Park which is up in the third district. We, Where, what is that, what's an area, what would be a city? That would that, be uh, Silmar, in Silmar, the Silmar in area, okay. area mm -hmm. off the 210 mm -hmm. freeway up there. We also have Vet, Veterans Community Regional Park, which is located in a similar area. It's only a few miles from El Carrizo. We have, um, well, let's see, the, we have the three largest parks, which uh, Castaic is up at the northern end of the county off of the five freeway, right before you leave Los Angeles County. Then all the way down to next to Diamond Bar and Pomona, San Dimas area, we have Benelli Regional Park over there. And kind of in between Benelli and Castaic, we have Santa Fe Dam, which is a, a regional park as well, which is located right off the 605 freeway and the 210 freeway. And all three of those larger parks offer boating opportunities, um, a variety of hiking and uh, different other activities, picnicking, fishing, all of those types of things. So like Shabam, I know they have horse trails and hiking as well as, you know, a lot of them don't have all of it. So what kind of, pro as an example in the hiking, what kind of programs do we offer to families to encourage them to sort of take a look? Well, and for trails, we have uh, naturalists. If you go to one of our nature centers, that can take you out on a nature hike. Is on, that right? on one of the trails. Mm -hmm. So for people that maybe they're not familiar with hiking, it's a good opportunity to go with a guide and be able to hike. Not hike and then they identify things for you. Do you for, have, you know, is that something you have to make reservations for? Do you, do you call a particular area or, or can you do it online? Well, yeah, we've actually, we've got a great trails website that we just mm -hmm. launched over the last year. And if you go to trails.lacounty.gov, you can trails.lacounty.gov and you can access our, our new website and you can access it from a handheld or from your computer at home. And there's, it's really a great process because you can, uh, if you know the name of the trail, you can enter the name of the trail and it will search for it and find it for you. Or if you just wanna look close to your house, you can enter your, either your address or your zip code and uh, it'll find the nearest trail to your house and the access point. And one thing that's really cool about our trails website is once you find a trail that's close to your house, you can actually pull up the trail. You can see photos of the trail itself. You can check out the current weather at the site and the trail will be rated as to beginner, intermediate, or oh, advanced. Oh, wow, so you so, have an opportunity. I mean, if you, like, like you said, if you're just starting, yes. you have the opportunity, to, it's not a tough trail, you're not gonna, you yep. know, pass out halfway through the, the hike or something like exactly. that. Exactly, it gives right. you an idea of what to expect when you get out there. But I, I tell you, with all the opportunities, whether it be hiking, the wildlife sanctuaries, you know, the botanic gardens, all that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, there's some incredible opportunities out there, and we're going to spend some more time on that in the next segment. So with that, we'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs>
Welcome back. Well, we've had an opportunity to talk about some of the programs uh, that we offer, but there's another couple of things under County Parks and Rec that I don't think people realize. We'll talk about the golf in, in a minute, but you know, the Hollywood Bowl and the John Anson Ford Theater, two icons in the County of Los Angeles, guess where they are? They're under your leadership. They are. Maybe we can talk a little bit about the history of the bowl and the John Anson Ford, just briefly. And, you know, I, a lot of people know where that, that but a lot of people did, did, did not know that, that they are under our venue, that they're a county facility. It's like Disney Hall and some of the other. People don't understand that. So those are great summertime venues. Sure. And the Hollywood Bowl is probably our most famous park. It's world famous, but people don't realize it's a Los Angeles County regional park. And it's open to everyone. And it's open 365 days a year and there's a museum there and there's picnic areas there. But the music programs are all operated for us by the LA Philharmonic. And the Philharmonic reimburses us for all the maintenance costs of the Hollywood Bowl. So we have this outstanding world-class venue. The taxpayers own it, but it doesn't cost the taxpayers a dollar because all the ticket holders through the purchase of their tickets help pay for the maintenance and care of it. Pack a lunch, bring your wine, just enjoy the beautiful evening. Absolutely. And then right across the freeway is the John Anson Ford, which is an inc another incredible little secret. Mm -hmm. uh, not quite as large as the bowl, right? Mm -hmm. But really a unique venue. And it's focused really on two things, emerging artists, people that can't make it at the Hollywood Bowl yet, and this is a venue for them to be able to entertain. And we even had one group that one year, they were at uh, the Ford Theater, and the next year they had moved up in the entertainment world and they were across the freeway at the Hollywood Bowl. And they have a lot of ethnic entertainment. Ethnic there. entertainment yeah. is the other uh, hallmark of the John Anson Ford Theater. As you know, in Los Angeles County, we have people from all over the world. We're the most culturally, ethnically diverse site on the face of the earth. And this is a place for entertainment for folks that have come from all over the world to enjoy uh, music and other entertainment from their home country. Two ama amazing facilities. And uh, I know that we've spent a lot of money recently in renovation, particularly John Anson Ford. And, over the last number of years at the Hollywood Bowl, and I just would encourage anyone that's out there that has never been to either one of those facilities to make sure they make an effort uh, throughout the summer and other times. And there's other special programs because you'll see major entertainers. It may not be an L.A. Phil program, but they rent out the bowl, and, and that's another great place to see the jazz festivals and big entertainment. What is the Parks After Dark program? The Parks After Dark program, it's a, it's a really great program. This is our sixth year that we've actually had the program in place. We started with only a few parks, and this year we've gotten up to about nine parks that we're operating at. And really what we do is we do extended programming, and, so, um, and we target at-risk youth. So we've gone out and we'll try and out offer activities generally at night up till 10 o'clock at night in our, in our parks. Mm. And we'll do things that'll, that'll bring the youth in and we, we encourage them to bring their families as well because we, we do safe family type of activities. And if it's a park that has a gymnasium, for example, we might actually have a pickup basketball game where we just put together a lot of the different youths and uh, organize a quick game. If it's a, a park with a swimming pool, we'll actually, in many cases, we'll open up the pool at night and offer them a chance to just swim or in some cases we've even shown um, movies in the pools at night which oh, has been really idea. popular it's like being on a cruise ship huh? that's right yeah i wonder what that feels like but anyway <laughs> that was an inside joke <laughs> so so you have all these opportunities and i, I think i've read it a couple of occasions where we've had like the public safety personnel play a basketball game or against yep. the local kids and the you know to sort of you know increase that community outreach mm -hmm. and we're friends and neighbors not enemies not us versus them kind of a thing is that correct that's correct the, the sheriff department is a one of our major players and partners in this program and they're always at the programs they yeah they'll organize they'll participate in the pickup games in fact some of the youths have beaten the sheriff's teams in uh, some of the games and stuff but but it builds a fr friendly rivalry and it also helps the kids to get to know the officers exactly. and understand that the officers are their friends public health is another big player in this as well and uh, they're one of our partners and you know having these types of activities in the park it helps reduce the incidences of overweight and diabetes and heart disease and well that takes like us that. into our next segment here we is part of the programs and you've been very good about broadcasting this but again people need to know we really are working on the health and fitness piece and goals uh, in our park system to not you know to encourage people and families particularly 
uh, even with English as a second language kind of a situation to do. So maybe whatever some of our health and fitness opportunities out there for in our parks on a you know, year-round basis, actually. Well, you know, we've got a lot of great opportunities. As Russ mentioned earlier, we've got 177 sites, and I like to think that that's 177 opportunities for people to get out and get fit and get healthy. And in many of our parks, if, if you like to do individualized um, recreation or fitness, you can, on your own, you can go out and you can access one of our trails, or you can go to a park that has a trail. On uh, many of our parks, we have fitness courses now. In fact, yeah. at Cerritos Regional Park, we well, have- Well, yeah, not only the fitness courses, but then the fitness areas. Fitness and areas. I will tell you, because right. uh, I walked that park a lot, mm -hmm. obviously to some people's chagrin, because <laughs> I see standing one, but, but the point being is both of those facilities are packed. Yep. There's always people waiting. And it runs from all ages. You know, it's the buff guys to the little old lady to the senior, whatever it may be, to, to access that kind of thing. And it's, it's just good to see that people are concerned. So let's switch gears a little bit there and say something that's very important to me. What, what can seniors do at our parks? We have a lot of programs for seniors. We have senior aquatics programs, so where we have pools, we offer exercise for seniors. And then we have classes that uh, seniors can learn how to dance or dance and get exercise um, and do other fitness and exercise type programs. We also have uh, centers where seniors enjoy meals together and just the camaraderie and fellowship and being able to meet with other seniors and play board games or just relax and watch TV or find a place to cool off. Speaking of that, it's been we've had, you know, from early this year throughout the summer, we've had some hot days. We offer some cooling centers, is that correct? We do, we have a, a variety of cooling uh, centers throughout the county. Many of our parks that have community buildings, you know, we'll open them up. If you, the, probably the best thing to do is to go to parks.lacounty.gov to get a full listing of all of our cooling centers located throughout the department. Where does it stop? I mean, now we have, well now we can discuss briefly, the, the world's largest golf system almost. I think, what, 19 courses? 19 courses at 17 locations throughout the county. So it's, it's one of the largest municipal golf systems in the nation, if not the largest. We believe it's the largest, and it's focused on letting everybody play. So our fees are the lowest in the county, so that there's complete access for seniors or any, any person, and we have a great junior golf program that you're gonna probably be talking more about later, but this gets young people in and gets them involved. And one of the unique things we found about that is once the kids get involved, then they say, hey, mom, dad, come and play golf with me. And it gets the whole family involved. Exactly, and you know, one of the things we've learned too, those are our future customers. Yes. And uh, we've set up our golf courses to encourage young, you know, up close tees so they're not struggling all the time. And then we have a program, maybe you can talk about it. Uh, it's, it's a free program throughout the entire county, one week at a time to, to teach the young people, I mean, from three years old on up, I think we've had some as young as three yes, or four, the basic skills of golf, etiquette, those kinds of things. Uh, so what kind of a program is that? We've got a, a great junior golf program uh, that we're very proud of. And we have, we offer it at all 19 of our sites and we run about 2,500 kids or youths through it every year. And we do, we teach them all aspects of the game of golf. We teach them how to drive the ball, how to chip the ball, how to putt the ball. We also teach them some important life skills. We have a, we like to emphasize what, what we call the rich program, which is respect, integrity, character, and honesty. And those are big important life skills that the game of golf actually teaches and promotes. One of the, uh, the biggest thing or the most important things though that I've heard from the youths themselves is they love the putting contest. On right. the final day, they get out there and they compete with get each other. Get their little medals and do all those kinds of things. Great program. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I mean, it's one of many. Uh, you're to be both thanked and appreciated for uh, the operation of our parks. We could go on and on and on, but time won't allow. But I really appreciate you both taking the time to be here to tell us a little bit. We could go on, like I said, a lot more about our county parks and recreation department. You should be proud. Russ, whenever that day happens, uh, Blessings to you and good health in your retirement. Thank you. And John, thank you for your service as well and ongoing. So we appreciate that. And again, appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. 
So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Welcome back to Dial In. My last guest today is Nick Bedell. When Nick was a high school golf prodigy at Woodrow Wilson High School in Long Beach, he competed in my annual Kanabi Cup golf tournament, a tournament that is hosted in partnership with our county parks and recreation department for the high schools throughout the 4th District. Now he is golf outreach manager at the Tiger Woods Learning Center in Anaheim. So I want to thank Nick. Thanks for joining me today and welcome. Thanks for having me. So let's start back. So let's start from the beginning. How'd you get into golf? You know, I started uh, at a young age. Um, my uncle used to take my two brothers out to the driving range, and I'd just tag along. And then uh, I got hooked. And you got hooked, and did you play at a lot of the local courses and county courses? Or? You know, I spent most of my time at Lakewood Golf Course. I lived across the street, so I spent about 95% of my time there. That's a um, county course, Lakewood yes. Country Club there in, in Lakewood. And then my uncle worked at Los Verdes, so I also went up there and, and uh, practiced a little bit as well. Los Verdes is another county course up in the Palos Verdes Peninsula area. Probably one of the prettiest municipal oh, golf courses incredible. Uh, around that you can play for under 50 bucks, right? <laughs> Definitely. I mean, when you look at it, you got the Trump Nationals and all the private country clubs on the water and the pebble beaches of the world. But, you know, for, for a muni golf course and for the average citizen that really wants that picturesque times and those kinds of opportunities, wind and rain and everything else, uh, Los Verdes is probably one of the best. Incredible views, every hole you can see the ocean pretty much, and uh, some incredible greens for, uh, for public golf. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you were uh, the Kanabi Cup champion in 2002. That's a long time ago, young man. Yeah. So like either yesterday. you're getting older or I'm getting <laughs> older, and I'm sure about it. What are some of your, uh, I mean, what was some of your experience in playing, like playing against the other teams? Was that a, did you look at it as an opportunity to sort of get to know where the competition is uh, in high school? And Yeah, you know, um, when you're a freshman, you always want to play in the Kanabi Cup. That was the tournament to play in in high school. And uh, you just wanted to be top four on your team because you wanted to be in that tournament. And uh, I was fortunate enough to do that every year. And uh, we are uh, we had a pretty good team. So we won it in 2000. We won it in 90, uh, 99, I believe. And then I was uh, lucky enough to win it as an individual in 2002. Good ride, good ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any favorite memories from the Kanabi Cup? Any holes or one, or any exciting opportunities? Or, <laughs> yeah, you know, um, some of the best moments are lifting that trophy at the end of the day, um, receiving a handshake from you, <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, some of the memories I've had recently are coming back and uh, giving back and checking out the kids and checking out the scores they're shooting. Yeah, you know, I know. when I won, I shot 70, and I think what, this past year the kid shot 66. So 66, <laughs> they're, getting, yeah. they're getting better. Yeah, right, getting better <laughs> and younger, too. You're also very helpful from time to time with our junior golf program. Yeah, I started um, in L.A. County Junior Golf in 2007, uh, and I worked there for a couple of years and gave back. Um, kids are great. It was, that's what got me into teaching and got me into kids. Um, you know, they start young. That's right. So. Well, you stayed local after high school. You went to, you played at Long Beach State, is that correct? Yep. And uh, what was your experience like at the collegiate level, and, and how did that compare to where you were at high school? Hey, you know, college golf, uh, so much fun. You get to travel. You get to play some amazing golf courses. Um, you get to meet new people from all over the world. Um, if, if you have a chance to play college golf, I, I recommend it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's an incredible opportunity. Like you say, I mean, because you do travel and because you do meet, you know, and who they, they could be the next PGA player. You never know. You know, I played in uh, high school with John Merrick, who also won the Kanabi Cup and now is a PGA Tour winner. And I got to see John Merrick play at Augusta for wow. one round. You know what I'm saying? It gave me goosebumps. So. <laughs> so where did your golf career take you after Long Beach State? Did you continue to play? Did you try any of the mini tours or you just sort of? No, you know, um, well, when – while I was at Long Beach State, I was in the L.A. County Junior Golf Program. And then uh, once I graduated, I was fortunate enough to receive a position with the Tiger Woods Foundation. So now you're here at the Tiger Woods Foundation. What's your role there? Uh, I'm a golf professional, trying to introduce the game of golf to as many kids as possible. Um, this past year, we introduced the game to over 10,000 kids. 
So explain to the folks out there, because a lot of people aren't familiar with this learning center. I've had the opportunity to tour it down there. Mm -hmm. You were kind enough to give me the tour. But it's not just golf, and it's not just hitting the golf ball and not learning how to play golf, but there's an academic piece to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're big in academics, uh, big in STEM, and uh, we're just really trying to get the kids involved in thinking about going to college and thinking about their future. And so give us some of the programs on, on the inside of that building. And you can talk more about the golf side, but what's yeah. on the inside of that building? Um, so we have uh, classes in forensic science, marine science, uh, engineering, uh, rocketry. So uh, a lot of different classes that kids won't see in the regular school. Uh, and it's all free. It's all free. And more importantly than that, I've had the opportunity to tour it. And I will tell you, it's not only free, but it's probably the most up-to-date equipment I mean, you wouldn't see anything any better at a collegiate level no. or some major, you know, academic institution. The facilities and the quality of education and the equipment that they get to use and experience on at a very young age yeah. has to be phenomenal. So then let's move outside. So what do you tell the young person that wants to be the next Nick Bedell? Well, you know, uh, I'm teaching the stuff that the pros at Lakewood uh, taught me. So... Um just trying to get the good grip, good posture, um, good setup, and then we work with the mechanics and then, you know, move on to the golf course from there. So, you know, what, what, how, how important is it for, for those of us in a political level to be able to, uh, you know, have youth sports activities like golf and others? I mean, that was an important part of your life, right? I mean, that yeah. sort of focused you because you love to play golf, but in order to play golf, you had to do what? You had to go to school, right? Definitely. Uh, school is always first. Uh, get your homework done, then you can go out and practice. Uh, but, you know, in this day and age with uh, computers, uh, cell phones, video games, you know, it's very important to get, get the kids out, running, uh, swing a club, anything that's uh, good for their health. I, you know, I noticed in some of the free programs that we offer at the county, those putting the skills, basic mm -hmm. skills, things. it seems like the numbers are picking up. I know there's a big discussion right now about the life of golf and if, is it going to have be able to exist with the drought and everything mm -hmm. else. Uh, do you see more young people getting involved? You know, yeah, with so many programs around, uh, I do. And, uh, you know, L.A. County um, making it so much so affordable, um, free golf lessons, which is uh, unheard of. Right. <laughs> um, it's great. And uh, I think that's the way uh, uh, we need to do it for these kids to, to get excited about the game of golf. So do you have any, what's next for you as far as your golf career? Are you going to stay at Tiger Woods? or? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to stay there. I just started in the PGA program. You received my Class A, so hopefully in a couple of years I'll get that, and then uh, we'll see what the future has in store. So I, what other just brief comments you might have about getting other people involved in the game of golf outside of young people? I mean, obviously they're future customers for county golf courses, but uh, what advice do you have for us out there? Yeah, I know uh, county does a great job. I mean, just – it's so affordable to play. Um, I know other courses in the county um, are, are a little more expensive than the, the L.A. County courses. So uh, I'd see making it affordable and uh, speeding up play. You know, the, no one wants to be out there for six hours. So, you know, county courses, um, the courses I've played, you know, you can get around four and a half hours and uh, have a great day. And that's what it is. I mean, because that's a, it's a time element now too, and it's just the pace of players is an Definitely. important part. So anyway, well, so as as you look back, and obviously the county was an important part of your start. It takes you on to school. You had the opportunity through golf to get to college, all those kinds of things. So, you know, what what would be a final word for you to some young person that's looking at this program about focus, opportunity, whether it's golf or whatever it may be. You know, I'd say just take advantage of the programs. Um, L.A. County Junior Golf Program, probably one of the best in the country. Um, Tiger Woods Foundation, it, um, you know, take advantage of those things. Uh, they only come around once in a while. Once and, in a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, stick with it. I mean, it's a, it's a great game. It's a hard game, but uh, it's a game you can play forever. That's right. It's lifelong. And some are fortunate enough to be able to play it professionally. Others just do it for, for yeah. a great family sport, whatever it may be. Anyway, Nick, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Good luck out at Tiger Woods, and yeah. thank you for all your help with our county junior golf program, and uh, really appreciate you taking the time to be with me. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you. <laughs> Actually.
he said hi to you. Oh, Thank you again for tuning in to Dial In. I want to thank our special guests today, Russ Guinea, John Wicker, and Nick Bedell, for taking the time to join me. Whether it's fishing, cooking, camping, swimming, or gardening, there's something for everyone in our Los Angeles County Park System. I hope you'll find some time to visit your local county park, play one of our 19 golf courses, or tour one of our beautiful natural gardens. To find your local park and all the programs and activities offered there, please visit parks.lacounty.gov. Thank you again for tuning in to Dial In. We'll be back next month with an all-new show.